Hello, I'm Matthew Kolaje. I'm the partner of the business immigration practice at GIA Law Group. I'm here at our headquarters in the financial district in New York City. And today we're talking about a very interesting development. Uh, the Immigration Service of the United States has uh, announced the reintroduction, uh, the kind of the, the re the reactivation of an entrepreneur parole program uh, for foreign entrepreneurs that would like to start a business in the United States. Now, uh, as some of you may know, there isn't currently a, an actual entrepreneur visa available to come to the United States. There's an investor visa program, but it only applies to certain countries and there's certain limitations to it. Uh, so for many, uh, many foreign nationals, in particular Chinese foreign nationals and Indian foreign nationals, there really isn't a solution for entrepreneurs who would like to start their own company. Even if they have a very successful new idea that they wanna implement, even if they've raised funding, okay? Because most visas, in the United States require you to be employed by a, another employer. You cannot be self-employed. So this program was introduced by Obama in 2017. It was then basically shut down by the Trump administration. But now under Biden, this program has been revived. It's quite an interesting program. It's quite flexible, uh, which is very, very important uh, for entrepreneurs that are starting a new business but who can show, who wanna be able to show through various different uh, documentation, by various different documentation that their, their company will be successful or already is, is successful. So what are the criteria for uh, this, uh, this type of parole? Again, this is not a, a visa exactly. Uh, it is not a, 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 a non-immigrant or immigrant visa, but this is, uh, a type of parole, which means that you are legally admitted to the United States and you are able to work, you have work authorization. So it functions ex basically exactly like a visa or a visa status, but it is a discretionary grant of parole, permission to enter, to work and uh, and direct and develop a, uh, a new business. So what are the requirements for this new type of parole. Again, it's not exactly a visa, but it's basically exactly the same thing as a visa. I'll explain the differences later. First of all, the entrepreneur must have a significant ownership stake in the startup. So they must own part of at least part of the startup, at least 10% and have an active and central role in developing, uh, in developing the business, which makes perfect sense. That's what a, an entrepreneur visa or an entrepreneur program should be. The startup must have been formed in the United States within the past five years, so it does have to be a new a new business, all right, within the last five years preceding uh, the application date. Then the business must show that it has uh, raised significant capital or is otherwise uh, otherwise able to demonstrate that it will be successful uh, or has already been successful. It has to, uh, the applicant has to show that they've raised a significant capital investment of at least 250000 from qualified investors with established track records. Or the investment, the business has attracted significant awards or grants of at least 100000 100, from federal or state or local government agencies. Or, or if the applicant can't show significant capital investment or awards or grants, they can show other reliable and compelling evidence uh, that their business will be successful uh, and uh, will, will be able to create jobs in the United States and revenue. That could be, for example, admission to a competitive uh, startup accelerator or perhaps extensive media coverage and interest uh, or other compelling evidence that the that the business would be uh, will be successful. So that's a very flexible standard. All right. So you can either show at least uh, two hundred fifty thousand in qualified uh, capital investment or significant awards, at least one hundred thousand 
in uh, government, uh, government awards or grants or other evidence, which may be a very detailed business plan, uh, perhaps the, the, the you know, uh, important clients have, have, have expressed interest in this, in this business or other reliable compelling evidence. So those are, those are quite flexible requirements. Uh, if the applicant is eligible, up to three entrepreneurs per startup are allowed to apply, and the initial grant of parole is 2.5 years. And uh, if the entrepreneur is reasonably successful, that can be extended for another 2.5 years. So that's up to five years of parole with work authorization in the United States. And the uh, and on, the entrepreneur can also bring his family and his spouse is eligible for work authorization. So this is a very, a very flexible program. We'll see how stringent the requirements are applied. Again, this is a, a discretionary grant of parole. So this is not a visa application that can be appealed if it's denied, et cetera. It's completely discretionary. And we'll see how stringent the Biden administration is uh, in actually applying these criteria. Uh, but as I'm sure you know, the Biden administration is much more pro-immigrant and pro-foreign investment and pro-job uh, growth and creation via a foreign investment than the Trump administration was. Now, uh, let's talk about some specific questions that we've received regarding this program. Again, uh, somebody asked, how many times can the parolee extend this parole? As I said already, it is extendable uh, once. There's an initial application of 2.5 years. The applicant can come in and direct and grow their business here. And it, they're able to apply for another extension uh, of another 2.5 years for a total of uh, of total of five, uh, two point, a total of five years. Now, in order to extend, they must show that their business has been successful, and the criteria are that they have to uh, show uh, that they have attracted five hundred thousand in investment during that period, or uh, or that they have uh, or they created a certain amount of a certain amount of jobs during that period. So the, app, the business must be successful in order to ex, uh, extend it for another 2.5 years. Now, another common question, can I convert this to a green card or can I change to another status? Now that is a disadvantage. This is an, a grant of parole, which is not a visa status technically. So this is not like being an H-1B status, uh, for example. Uh, and it does not qualify the entrepreneur for a green card. Now, that doesn't mean that the entrepreneur, once they are here, they cannot qualify for another uh, non-immigrant or immigrant status, you know, through a separate visa program, uh, such as an H-1B. But an H-1B does require that you find a, a, an employer, a U.S. employer, uh, to sponsor the, the employee, which, which cannot be an owner of the company. All right. So I think this is, and also the, the, the startup business cannot, cannot sponsor an owner for a green card normally either. All right. You cannot be self-employed and be sponsored for, uh, before a green card for your, by your own company normally. So uh, this is not a long-term solution. Um, you would have to still qualify for a non-immigrant visa, a long-term, a longer-term non-immigrant visa, or a green card through another through uh, through another path. But this is a very good temporary solution and short-term solution, in particular for certain nationalities such as Chinese nationals or Indian nationals that do not have another short-term solution for coming to the U.S. to uh, to uh, direct and, and develop their own their own company. So I think those are the, let's see if we have any other questions. What would my immigration status be under this program? Again, this is a grant of parole. This is not a typical non-immigrant or immigrant status. 
such as uh, such as an H-1B status, uh, or, or and it's not a, a grant of a, an immigrant visa category such as EB-2 or EB-3. It does not uh, allow extension of an, an, a non-immigrant or Im, uh, non-immigrant status, and it does not lead directly to a uh, to a green card. This is a discretionary temporary grant of permission to enter basically and work uh, for the uh, the startup company. All right, another very good question is, what is the difference between the Entrepreneur Pro Parole Program and EB2, uh, uh, sorry, EB5 or E2? Now, the, the U.S. does have an investor visa program, which is called the E2 visa. It's a very good visa. Uh, it allows an investor to come to the United States to develop and direct uh, a business. If they have, can show that they've developed a, they've invested a significant amount of money in the U.S. business, uh, but this is only available to certain nationalities, and the company has to be owned and controlled by nationals of that country. So that's quite limiting. For example, uh, this is this visa is not available for Chinese nationals. It's not available for Indian nationals and certain other nationals. All right, it is available for most all European countries for Canadian nationals. But even for those countries, there are limits. For example, a Canadian national can come in uh, with an E2 if they're Canadian, of course, and if the company is Canadian owned. So if they were investing in a German company, for example, it would not work, all right? They could not come in and, and invest in a, a company that is owned and controlled by German nationals or by any other nationality besides Canadians uh, and get an E2 visa, all right? So that is the, the limitation of the E2. Now, EB5 is an investor visa, uh, but there is a very high, investment threshold now. It's been raised to at least 900,000 or possibly more. Uh, and there are very long backlogs. This does lead to a green card, a permanent residence for the investor and their family. But there is a very long backlog for certain nationalities, Chinese nationals in particular. There's at least a 10-year wait, at least, for Chinese nationals. So this is not a short-term solution at all, and there is quite a high uh, initial investment threshold, like I said, at least 900,000. So EB-5 is absolutely not a, not a short-term solution for Chinese nationals in particular that have uh, long waits. And it does have a high investment threshold of at least 900,000. Uh, can, um, an investor, entrepreneur, employer, sponsor, H-1B employees? All right, well, this is a good question. Now, the startup can sponsor H-1B employees that aren't the owner, the entrepreneur. That's, of course, no problem. All right, but unfortunately, the entrepreneur, him or herself, cannot self-sponsor for an H-1B, as I said before. Unfortunately, an H-1B does, is not permitted for self-employment. The entrepreneur cannot show cannot be a, have a controlling interest in the startup business. Now, can this business be uh, reorganized so that uh, it could sponsor the founder for an H-1B? Yes, but the founder would probably have to relinquish uh, ownership of the business or at least controlling or controlling ownership. And there would have to be a board probably that would be able to hire or fire uh, the entrepreneur. There would have to be a relationship of employer employee. The employer, the, the entrepreneur would have to be an employee who would be subject to dismissal by the company. So it's possible to reorganize the business so that sponsorship for an H-1B is possible, but the entrepreneur would probably have to relinquish a control of the business. Now, when can this start? 
Uh, and how does this work? Uh, well, this this program technically has been functioning since uh, 2017. Technically, it's been on, on the books, but Trump issued a rule saying that this was going to be rescinded. Basically, no applications were approved. There, I believe there was one only uh, that has we have a record of, of approval. So it basically has been non-functional. But in theory, this 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 program is now immediately available as a possibility. Uh, our following question is spouses and children. As I mentioned, the entrepreneur can bring in his or her spouses and children. They would apply at the same time. And the, the spouse can also apply for work authorization as well. The children cannot, but uh, the, uh, the, the, the entrepreneur can be, bring his, her, his or her family. Okay, what happens if the application is denied? Well, as I mentioned earlier, this is not a, a normal visa application. This is a discretionary grant of parole. So there really are no options if the application is denied, there is no appeal, there is no appeal process. This is entirely discretionary. The entrepreneur could apply again. There's no, there, there doesn't seem to be any limitation on reapplying. Uh, if the entrepreneur can address the, the issues with the application, perhaps there wasn't enough uh, investment, uh, capital, uh, perhaps the business plan wasn't good enough, et cetera. Uh, but there is no option to appeal the, the denial. And uh, like I said, we're going to have to see how flexible the Biden administration is in granting these uh, applications. But as I said, it appears the application criteria are quite flexible. Either you show a 250000 in uh, qualifying a, a capital investment or you show uh, you show grants, significant grants, or any other evidence showing the the, the compelling evidence that the, the business will be successful. So I'm quite hopeful that this will be very workable. That the Biden administration will be applying these criteria in a reasonable way, and this will become a viable option for entrepreneurs to come to the United States and develop and direct their business for up to five years in uh, a relatively efficient and rapid uh, way, hopefully. How does this work? Well, the application is submitted to the Immigration Service. There's an application form. And once that is approved, then the, the applicant uh, goes to the consulate and picks up the entry document. So the process, in theory, could be quite quick, depending on how quick, quickly the processing times are. As we've seen with the Immigration Service during the Trump administration and now during the Biden administration, unfortunately, processing times still have been quite long for, for, for many types of visa applications. We'll see how quickly these are adjudicated. But in theory, this could be a relatively uh, quick and efficient way to obtain entry to the United States to develop and direct uh, a, a startup business. So here at Geolaw Group, we're very hopeful about this, about this program, in particular for uh, Indian and Chinese nationals that are caught in significant uh, backlogs uh, who may not have uh, be able to use the EB-5 program because of the huge backlogs uh, for Chinese nationals in particular. And for because of the limitations of the E2 investor visa program, which does not apply to many nationalities, so uh, we're we'll keep an eye on this program and see how this is actually implemented, and we hope to have an update uh, for our clients and for the for the entrepreneurial community uh, about uh, the usability of this program and the effect of this effectiveness of this program and we'll be sure to provide updates uh, on a regular basis.